Around six to seven years ago, Corey Sanders was one of the hottest names in high school basketball. He had many videos with over millions of views and even had his own series on YouTube known as the Home Team Hoop Series. And things really couldn't have got any better for this guy. But ever since then, he's really disappeared and no one's really said anything about him. So, where is Corey Sanders? Corey Sanders, man, when you hear that name, you instantly think of a highlight type of play. He's one of the most confident hoopers you'll ever see, and he's always having fun on the court. When I was growing up, that's one thing I always loved about him. It seemed like he was having a ton of fun out there. And that's what basketball should be about. Anytime you do a cool play, you gotta reward yourself. For a guy that had a ton of fans, hype, attention, and clout, he's kind of falling off, though. Don't worry, though. Today, we're going to take a deep look at what's happened to him. If you're new to the channel and you like videos like this, hit that subscribe button, join the family, and leave a like for more. And hey man, without further ado, let's dive straight into the video. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You guys already know. To get into this guy's story, we gotta throw it all the way back to where things started. When Mr. Sanders himself was growing up, he was always known as a pretty decent basketball player. It wasn't really until he got to high school where he really started to make a lot of waves. Corey began his high school career at McKeel Academy in Lakeland, Florida. And this is where he actually played two seasons for that school, but he decided it wasn't a good fit for him. He wound up deciding to transfer to George W. Jenkins High School in the spring of his second year. This wasn't a good fit for him either, so he decided to move once again. Heading into his junior year, he enrolled at the very prestigious school known as IMG Academy. His stint there wasn't too long either. He wound up leaving immediately. He left IMG in November of 2013 for quote unquote family reasons. And after doing a lot of searching, he wound up transferring to Kathleen High School in Lakeland, Florida. But things weren't too sweet for him. He was actually ruled ineligible for the first half of his junior year of basketball. Heading into the second part of his year though, he had some things to prove. This is where he averaged 15.7 points per game for his high school team. I think we can all agree, this guy did a lot of moving in a very short amount of time. And with moving a lot, that also comes with adjusting to a new playbook and style. Heading into his senior year, you would think he would stick at that high school. I don't know if this guy just loved moving and trying new systems, but he left once again. He first returned to his former high school, George Jenkins, for the start of his senior season. Then he wound up transferring to Faith Baptist Christian Academy in Georgia in September of 2014. And finally, last but not least, he wound up going to West Oaks Academy in Orlando by November. And this is where he had a great senior season and led his team to a pretty solid record. What an adventurous high school career. It's not like he was transferring once a year. This guy I was moving two to three times a season. Some of the moves had to do with family reasons, but the other moves just really didn't make any sense. A little fun fact to throw in there, Corey Sanders was childhood friends with the current NBA player Dwayne Bacon, and they were actually teammates in high school and played on the same AAU team. When it was all said and done for him, he was a four-star recruit and ranked the 62nd best overall player in the 2015 class. His junior and senior season is when the Home Team Hoop series really started to thrive on YouTube. This was a really big thing because back then there wasn't a lot of YouTubers out there and not not a lot of high school players getting exposure. Whereas nowadays, there's a ton of high school kids all over the internet. And I can't lie, it was very entertaining to watch and Corey Sanders, he's just goofy, man. You know what I'm talking about, he's just a fun guy to watch. So of course, the videos were doing really good. But all that clout and all those views, they don't really translate to the next level. People don't care about that. Originally, Sanders wound up committing to the University of Central Florida in the fall of 2013. But he decommitted later that year. And on September 4th in 2014, he wound up committing to Rutgers. This was a very bold move for him, but I really think it made a lot of sense. Rutgers isn't known as a basketball powerhouse, we all know this. And he had a lot of other good schools offering him, and those may have been better choices. But I can see exactly what he was thinking. If he goes to Rutgers, he can be the star player and shine all the time, and he can play right away. And I'm sure when they were talking and the coaches were trying to get him to come there, they were saying that too. You guys really thought Corey Sanders was going to go to a college and sit his first year? Yeah, I don't think so. And just like I stated, he did not sit right away and he was the main player on that team as a freshman. In his first year there, he led the team in scoring with 15.9 points per game. That is extremely impressive for a guy who had a ton of hype and he lived up to it. One thing to note though that a lot of people really didn't talk about was that he was suspended four games for violating rules. That will come into play later in this video, so just keep that in the back of your head. For his freshman season, he shot 42% from the field and 31% from the three-point line. He also pitched in 4.3 assists and 3.3 rebounds, but he was kind of reckless and had three turnovers per game. But all in all, for being a freshman on a terrible team, he had an outstanding year. When that year came to an end, the head coach that recruited him retired. At this point, Tom Sanders really considered transferring or even declaring for the NBA draft. And most people thought he was going to enter the draft and he probably would have been a first round or early second round pick. But for reasons we don't know, he decided to come back and try to improve his draft stock and this is when our story takes a drastic turn. Have you guys ever heard the cliche, soft 
sophomore slump, well, that's exactly what happened. For the 2016 through 17 season for Rutgers, all of his stats took a hit. His field goal percentage dropped from 42 to 38, and his three point percentage went from 31 to 26. His assists went from 4.3 to 3.2, and his rebounds even dropped 0.1. And most importantly, his points per game went from 15.9 to 12.8. I wouldn't even say this guy had a bad year because he was getting doubled and even triple teamed, but it just wasn't up to the expectations that a ton of people had for him. And I think he would even tell you himself he didn't have a great season. Your stats are supposed to improve each year, not decline. Obviously, with having a not so great sophomore season, he had no choice but to come back for his junior year. And this is where things were better, but just not great like we expected. He jumped his points per game back up to 15.2, which is very impressive considering the things I'm about to tell you. He had no help whatsoever. He was getting double teamed almost every game. Anytime he drove to the goal, there was three on him. Anytime he did one dribble, there was two coming ready to help. He also brought his field goal percentage back up to 40%, which is decent. And his rebounds and assists stayed the same throughout the years, but I know you guys like to hear him. He averaged four rebounds per game and three assists. But this stat right here I'm about to tell you is the most important one and the determining factor. He shot an atrocious 22% from the three-point line. That's not going to cut it, and a ton of NBA scouts took notice in that. His three-point percentage went down each and every season. As a freshman, it was 31. As a sophomore, it was 26. And as a junior, it was 22. It's just not appealing to NBA scouts, and this really affected his draft stock. Ultimately, though, he felt like he's shown the scouts enough, and he wound up putting his name in the 2018 NBA draft. Was this a smart move? I don't think so, but hey, he did what he thought was right. At this point in time in his sophomore and junior year in his story, this is when a lot of people really forgot about him. When you're at a small school and you're not producing, there's no other way for it to happen. People just forget your name. And this was just a great example of that. But however, his story doesn't end there and we still have a long way to go. I really hate to say this, but it's just a downhill spiral from here. On October 4th in 2018, after he went undrafted, he signed a deal with the Rio Grande Valley Vipers of the NBA G League. That's a mouthful, but anyways, only roughly a month or two later, he was waived on November 1st of 2018. In matter of fact, he got waived without even playing a game for the team. That's really strange to me, and I tried doing some research on it, but I really couldn't find anything. Remember how I told you guys he was suspended at Rutgers? That may have something to do with it. Not that the suspension at Rutgers affected him at that team, but I think he has problems getting along with people. I don't know, it's always something wherever he goes. Anyways, let's continue on. On January 13th in 2019, Sanders signed with the Mega Basket Georgia of the Georgia A-League. And yes, trust me, I get it. I know you're sitting there like, what did you just say? I actually said it right. It's just a weird league. Long story short, it's like a basically mini pro league in Georgia. They only play like four or five games. He put up great numbers, but he was going up against mediocre competition. Ironically enough, later in that year, on October 3rd in 2019, he signed with the Houston Rockets G-League affiliate known as the Rio Grande Vipers again. I guess they wanted to give him another shot. I don't know why they signed him after cutting him previously. But on the exact same day, a year later, he got waived once again on November 1st in 2019. They waived him on November 1st in 2018, and then they waived him again on November 1st in 2019. I just think they're trolling this kid at this point. Come on now. It's not a coincidence that they waived him on the same day. There's a rule like if you cut him before the first or second, something like that, you get to save some money. So yeah, that was the main reason. But the fact that he got cut on the same day a year later by the same team is just pretty funny and ironic. At this point in time, you would think he's sitting there like, yo, I'm done with basketball. I'm going to do something else. This is miserable. But I got to give this guy some credit. He kept fighting. On December 12th in 2019, Corey Sanders signed a multi-year deal with the NBA G League team known as the Lakeland Magic. Does that Lakeland name ring a bell? It should because that's where he's from and played a lot of his high school basketball. And he signed a multi-year deal with him, so things were looking really good for him. And he didn't have a good year, but he put up some pretty solid numbers for a guy who's been cut a lot. He averaged eight points per game, three assist and 3.5 rebounds. I know those aren't great stats, but hey, at least he's still producing. He decided that wasn't a good fit for him like he did in high school and wound up going overseas on January 8th in 2020 to sign with a pro team. And this is where he improved his numbers and averaged 10.3 points, 5.1 assists, and 4 rebounds. And he was going up against pretty good overseas competition, so those numbers aren't too bad. But you know my boy Corey, he's always got to be on the move. He decided to leave that team. On May 6th in 2020, he wound up signing for a different 
overseas team in Poland. And this is where he's currently playing his basketball at, and he's still on the team. So yes, as of right now when I'm making this video, Corey Sanders is still out there hooping overseas. And for his team right now, he's averaging 19 points per game, 6 rebounds, and 8 assists. Hey, not too bad if you ask me, pretty efficient just like his high school days. And not even his high school days, also his college days. I gotta say, I'm really happy that he's still playing basketball and still grinding out there and trying to hold on to his dream. This guy has had without a doubt one of the most unbelievable basketball journeys. He transferred like 10 times in high school, had an up and down college career, and now he's traveling the world for basketball. And oh yeah, you can't forget to mention he got cut by the same NBA G League team, not once but twice. And I'm sure he's gotten depressed and demotivated, but the fact that he still gets up on his feet and keeps grinding it out, hey man. I gotta give him, you know, my claps, man. Props to you, my guy. I'm wishing Corey Sanders the best of luck, and I hope he continues to see a lot of success in his basketball career or whatever he chooses to do. If I'm being honest, he's probably not gonna make it to the NBA, but as long as he's playing and getting paid for it, that's the dream. Corey Sanders has had one crazy story. He was a high school phenom, and he was even good in college, but ever since then, he's kind of fallen off. Even though no one's talking about him, he's still out there putting in that work, so don't sleep on him. But hey, man, with all this being said, that's about gonna wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys guys learned something if you're new to the channel what are you doing join the family and hit that subscribe button and leave a like for more and as always let's be great i'm out y'all peace